In this lesson, we're going to talk about logarithms and logarithmic functions. Um, so I'll start off with logarithmic functions because that's what we left off with at the last lesson. So in the last lesson, we concluded that the inverse of an exponential function is called a logarithmic function. And hopefully you know how the graphs of logarithmic functions look like. And if you ever have trouble graphing a logarithmic function, just graph the exponential function and reflect it along the y goes x line because uh, the two functions are inverses of one another. So you should have something that looks like this. Uh, if you take the inverse of an exponential function, is x equals half to the power of y or uh, something like x equals 2 to the y. So the first one uh, that I said is an inverse of an exponential decay function, and this one is an inverse of an exponential growth function. But nonetheless, they are both um, logarithmic functions. Um, now, if you look, take a look at these two equations, it's a little strange. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's something strange about it because these equations don't look like the equations that we've, we've worked with in grade 9, 10, and 11. So the big difference um, about these two equations is that y is not expressed in terms of x. It's x in terms of y. And we usually express y in terms of x. We really don't want to change that. So what we have to learn is logarithmic notation or logarithm notation. And that's going to help solve that problem. That's going to help us express y in terms of x. But it's very important the idea that we held previously has not changed we're still working with the inverse of an exponential function. It might, the, 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 the form might look a little different, but we're still working with the inverse of an exponential function, which is a logarithmic function. Okay, so we have here two cubed equals eight. So this is something that you're really good at, hopefully, and that's exponential form. You write your power here, two cubed, and the power consists of two parts. You have the base of the power, and you have the exponent. So the base in this case is 2, and the exponent in this case is 3. And of course, 2 cubed is equal to 8, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So that's exponential form. And what we're going to do is convert uh, what we have written in exo form to logarithmic form. So logarithm, logarithmic form, we have uh, two parts of logarithm. So logarithm of base 2, or log base 2 of 8. So the 2 is the base of the logarithm, and the 8 is the argument of the logarithm, okay? So when we talk about powers, you have your base and your exponent, but when we talk about the logarithm, we have the base and the argument. But the idea of the two are exactly the same. So when I write, when I write log base 2 of 8, that's essentially me asking you, 2 raised to the power of what number is equal to 8? And of course, 2 raised to the power of 3 is equal to 8. That's why we write log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. So whenever you see a logarithm, you're thinking exponent. Okay, You're thinking exponent to get the answer. And we're going to practice that, but I just want to introduce that idea. So why do we want to go from exponential form to logarithmic form? because that's going to solve the problem that we had in the beginning. This is going to help us express y in terms of x. Okay, so we have y equals log base b of x. You know what? I'll show you an example. Let's say we have x equals 2 to the y. x equals 2 to the y. I'm going to change this, which is an exponential form. I'm going to change it to logarithmic form. So log, so the base of the logarithm is the same as the base of the power. So I'm going to write 2. The argument is x, and the exponent is y. Hey, what do you know? y equals log base 2 of x. So now I've written y in terms of x. You know, I'll write it as y on the left side, just to help you out a little. So y equals log base 2 of x. So that's why we introduced logarithmic form. It's going to help solve that initial problem that we introduced in the lesson. Okay, so this makes perfect sense, hopefully. A logarithmic function is defined as y equals log base b of x. 
Uh, there are other ways to read it, but I, uh, I generally say log base b of x. Um, and b has the same restrictions as what you had uh, learned earlier with exponential functions. So b must be positive and b cannot be 1. So I talked about why those restrictions occurred. Um, and those same restrictions occur when you study logarithmic function because this b comes from the b uh, in exponential functions. So it makes sense to have the exact same restrictions as beforehand. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Uh, rewrite each in logarithmic form, no problem. So log, what should the base of logarithm be? Well, the base of the logarithm is the base of the power. So I'll write two. The argument is 32 and it's equal to the exponent. Okay, logarithm of base three, one over 81 is the argument and the exponent is negative four. So once you get a few reps, um, it, it becomes pretty straightforward. The base of the logarithm is the base of the power. The argument is m in this case, and the exponent is 3. All right, let's take a look at the next page here. Ah, perfect. Here we go. Now we're evaluating logarithms. So log base 3 of 27. So I even wrote out what uh, what should be happening in your brain to answer these questions. So every time someone asks you to evaluate a logarithm, immediately immediately you're thinking exponent, exponent, exponent. Okay. In other words, to answer this question, ask yourself three raised to the power of what number will give you 27. And if you don't know your powers, you can play around with your calculator. Take three and raise the power to I don't know whichever numbers you feel is correct. But three is correct. 3 cubed is 27. Knowing your powers will be very helpful in this unit. So the answer is 3. The logarithm, to evaluate a logarithm, is just finding the exponent. Okay, you have the base and you have what the power is equal to. So 2 raised to the power of what is 1 over 8. Now be careful. The answer is going to be negative. It must be a negative exponent. So 2 to the power of negative 3. Right? That's going to get 1 over uh, 2 cubed, which is 1 over 8. 3 to the power of what? 3 raised to the power of what will give me 1 over 9? And that's negative 2. Okay, log base 10 of 0 0.01. I'm going to change it up a little because I really prefer fractions. So 0 0.01 is 1 over 100. So I don't know if you um, you can work with the decimal, but I think uh, changing it to a fraction really helps you find the exponent. Because now when I express it as 1 over 100, it's pretty clear that when I evaluate this logarithm, it should be negative 2. Because 10 raised to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 100. All right, what else do we have here? Rewrite each equation in exponential form. So right now we have logarithmic form, we're going to change it into exponential form. So the base of the power is 4, and the exponent is 3, and of course 4 cubed is 64. Okay, y equals log x. So the base of the exponent, hmm, well what's the base of the logarithm? So you don't see the base of the logarithm, and if you do not see the base of the logarithm, it's implied to be a base of 10. Okay, so if you look on your calculator, you have a log button. Okay, you have a log button. So you don't see the base. Okay, now some calculators can um, change the base to whichever value you want, but uh, most calculators cannot. So my calculator can't. So when I write log, uh, it's implied that the base is 10. So I write the argument down, so let's say eh, 100. Okay, log base 10 of 100. So 10 raised to the power of what number will give me 100? So hopefully you know that the answer is 2, because 10 squared is 100. So there we go. So this log button, it only works if you have a base of 10. Okay, so uh, let's say you want to answer uh, this question here, log base 3 of 27 using calculator. Uh, there are ways to, to do it, but you can't just say log 27, okay? You will not get 3 because this is a base of 10. This log is a base of 10, 
and u on a base of 3. So we'll uh, overcome this problem later on in the unit, but just be careful. Your most calculus can only work with a base of 10 and this this other special number, which uh, you'll learn in calculus, uh, lawn, but uh, that has a very special base. Okay, so we have a base of 10 here. If you don't see it, it's a base of 10. So 10 to the power of y is equal to x. And uh, logarithms with a base of 10 are called common logarithms. That's just, uh, just, that's just the name that we've given them. Okay, so yep, if it's base of 10, we don't need to write the base. Explain why log base 2 of negative 4 cannot be evaluated. So there are a lot of different explanations you could take. You can um, think about the logarithmic function and, and the domain of that function. But I'm just going to try to keep it simple by saying, let's say x is equal to log base 2 of negative 4. Okay, so... Let's see how this will look if we write it in exponential form. So the base of the power will be 2, the exponent is x, and it's equal to negative 4. So 2 to the power of x is equal to negative 4. Wait a minute. 2 to the x is greater than 0. Okay, 2 to the x is greater than 0. You take 2 and raise the power of anything you want, and you're going to get a value greater than zero. Uh, and if you have trouble accepting that, you can think about the exponential function graph, the exponential growth graph. All the values will be greater than zero. So since that is the case, therefore, log base 2 of negative 4 cannot be evaluated. In fact, we're going to make the argument that not only does log base 2 of negative 4 can't be evaluated, log base 2 of any value which is not positive cannot be evaluated, right? Because we said 2 to the x must be greater than 0. Okay, so if that's the case, if I even wrote log base 2 of 0, that's going to be undefined. Okay, I'll show you. So uh, I can do log base 10 of 0, which will still be undefined. See, math error. Log base 10 of negative 1, undefined. So you can try you can try 0, any negative value, you're going to get undefined every single time. Okay? And, yeah, writing in exponential form really helps with that idea of why it's undefined. Because when you have 2 to the x, it must be a positive value. Okay, it's going to generate all sorts of positive values, but never 0 or negative. All right, so last one here. D of t equals 93 log t plus 65. Uh, that's a distance in kilometers uh, in t seconds. So if we travel 798 kilometers, how long does it take? Okay, so let D of t equals 798. So this is a very simple logarithmic, logarithmic equation. We're gonna, uh, um, learn more about uh, logarithmic equations later at pretty much at the very end of the unit but this is a very simple one so we can go ahead and do this one um, so yeah subtract both sides by 65 so we have 733 and then divide both sides by 93 And then I'm going to express, because right now I really want to solve for t, and I can unlock and solve for t by rewriting this, which is, this is in logarithmic form. I can express this in exponential form, and that will isolate the argument of the logarithm. And I don't see a base, so it's a common logarithm. So it's a base of 10. There you go. Uh, you can punch into your calculator or leave an exact value. Uh, let's it says estimate, so I'm going to round it off to, uh, let's say, two decimal places. Whoa, 76,150. Oh, 76 million. Oh, wow. 
Okay, I wasn't expecting that. It takes about 76,158,859 seconds to travel 798 kilometers. All right, so very straightforward uh, logarithmic equation. Uh, really, I want you to practice going from logarithmic uh, form to exponential form and vice versa. And that's why I wanted you to solve this equation. Okay, so um, in this lesson, we talked about logarithmic functions and logarithms in general and how to evaluate them.